Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Doing Business in Bentonville. My name is Andy Wilson, and I'm the executive director of Doing Business in Bentonville. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. And I will tell you, we have got such a great topic, so we're going to jump straight into this. Let me welcome my gre- my guest this morning, Greg Binsley. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much. Man. It's an honor to be here. I, uh, <laughs> it's an honor to have you, man. Yeah, I have, I'll admit, I'm a, I'm a fan uh, of this uh, podcast and of what you're doing. And um, I have listened to every episode that's been out. I, yeah, so I've, I have it in my my list. And so just your, your guest okay. list. Okay. Um, has been incredible. I know it's a, you've got some new friends, you've got a bunch of old friends. And so for me yeah. to be a new friend oh, that you. you've invited on has been amazing. So well, thank you so much for having oh, me. Oh, Greg, listen, man, thank you for that. That means so much to me. And, and you know, speaking of that, Greg and I, uh, we, we met this year and we met cycling. We did. What a better way. There's no better way to meet. <laughs> no better. And for your, yeah, for your listeners, uh, I'm sure they've heard cycling here and there. Yeah. Uh, but they they need to know how good of a cyclist you are. Oh no no we're not going and there. I know I know you don't want to. But so the last time, just a small story. The last time that we cycled together, I had a slow leak in my back tire, and I had a pump. I was trying to pump it up. It would last what five minutes at the most. Yeah. And I had to limp home. And who was it that took me the way? It was you. It was. <laughs> It was Andy that took me the whole way. I think you had to spend like two CO2 cartridges on me, which I owe you for. No. Um, and uh, But just such a great cyclist and, and friend and really, you know, I, I appreciate that. Well, sure. listen, man, thank you so much. You know, uh, I, I really, I do, I love our friendship and how it's developing and, uh, you know, and I think we have a lot of interest and I think you just went somewhere pretty exciting to cycle. Um, well, yeah. it's, uh, I, I've been a couple places yeah. for sure, but yeah. I, not too long ago, we got to go to Napa, mm. um, and, and cycle in Napa some, oh. and, uh, it's, I mean, the wine country there is beautiful, yeah. of yeah. course, uh, but the cycling is, is great. And yeah. it's, I mean, through the hills yeah. and, and more mountains area, they got some yeah. tough, you know, it's a pretty good incline. Oh, yeah. Areas, and, uh, I'm I'm not the greatest climber, but I really enjoy the challenge. For well, sure. <laughs> I, I've not done Napa yet, but I'm definitely it's on my bucket list. I'm gonna get out to California and do some great riding out there. Yes. I love California; it's a great state. So much to do there, you know, especially around the sports and cycling and and all of that oh, hiking, yeah. all that great stuff. I mean, should I ask you where you've been lately? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Spain. That that is on my bucket list. Oh yeah, and well, York, uh, Spain is phenomenal, and I really recommend it. Uh, and it's a beautiful, beautiful area around the Metroidia. And, and, uh, in fact, I booked for next year. So I'm Did ready. You? Yes, I'm, I'm ready. Well, and the plan is when you do that, you cycle because you want to eat whatever you can. And just, the yeah. I'm sure the cuisine there and the food is incredible. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> we have to go to work, I oh, guess. Yes. Right. Yeah. No, we, <laughs> but let me just tell you about a bit more about, uh, my friend, Greg, uh, Greg is vice president of technology and development for for Harvest Group. Yes. Okay, now tell us about Harvest Group and then tell us about what you do. And then we have got some great topics around omni-channel retail that we're going to go deep on today. So you're going to lock it. So hang with us. But let's, so tell us about you and the company. Yeah, sure. Well, let's start with, with me. Um, I was Born and raised in Norman, Oklahoma, so a college town. Yeah. Um, but my dad's from Arkansas. I come up, came up here to go to the university and just love Northwest Arkansas so much I stayed. Um, and so uh, getting an engineering degree from the University of Arkansas has been just incredible for me um, and, and this community and just being involved in it for so long since the mid-90s. Um, I just, I love it up here. And so to be in an area where um, we have just such great companies um, obviously Walmart is just incredible, uh, for not just, mm-hmm. uh, as, as a company that provides such great things for their people and for their customers, but, but in our area, they provide it, it, incredible things, uh, culturally mm-hmm. for, mm-hmm. um, our area. So I, I love, you know, being here. Um, and so my, my journey has been, I was in e-commerce for a long, long time coming out of college, um, the early days of the internet. And, uh, we did internet application development early on and then jumped into e-commerce, uh, you know, in the early two thousands. Mm-hmm. And so I did that for about 13 years. Um, 
And we we built we uh, we built kind of niche websites mm-hmm. that really had a focus on certain um, certain product areas, and mm-hmm. so things like uh, safety equipment for the auto racing industry. Oh. Uh, so it's it's a place where we wouldn't necessarily compete with Amazon or some you know other ones, but we were known for that, mm-hmm. and we were known for some other areas. So that's kind of where I, I cut my teeth in that, and that's where. Uh, even the early days of it was Google AdWords at the time. Now it's just Google Ads. But we had one of the first accounts of Google AdWords um, and started learning, you know, what's now retail media and advertising started learning that in the early days. Um, so that, that's kind of the background. And then um, then I ended up uh, consulting for Harvest and joining Harvest. And uh, I've been there for just over five years now, which has uh, been incredible. And so uh, let me I'll, I'll tell you about Harvest. Uh, I would, yeah, a little bit yeah, about me. Sure, let's, no, let's that's great. Jump Thank into you. Harvest. Yeah, so Harvest is we're an integrated commerce agency, um, and really we for us we provide um, a total commerce solution uh, to really give our clients and guide our clients through transformational growth. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know that's a lot of words, a lot of you know yeah, yeah. really important words for us. So yeah. I, I can kind of talk you through some of that. Sure. Um, Integrated commerce, really, when you're, and I love that, uh, what you've been doing around omni-channel. And so that's really what we're approaching with integrated commerce is talking about omni-channel. Mm-hmm. You had um, one of your guests uh, a while back, it's been a few months, but one of your guests mentioned that omni-channel is going to be so ubiquitous or so just necessary that it's just going to become commerce in mm-hmm. a sense, that it's just going to become, you have to do it mm-hmm. to really succeed. And that's what we're seeing and that's what we provide to our clients is that omni-channel is such an integrated part of what we do that it's it's just become commerce now right? Um, because you can't, you can't go without doing it in a sense. That's right. Um, and so for us, it's that integration uh, across all of the omni-channel areas and uh, across retailers. So mm-hmm. we, uh, Harvest Group, we definitely cut our teeth at Walmart and Sam's and um, I believe this is... We just completed 17 years, so we're we're on our you know 18th year and have a great history here in Northwest Arkansas. Um, over the last seven eight years, we've expanded into other retailers. Our clients have said, "Hey, this is amazing what you're doing for us at Walmart, at Sam's, and so what can you do for us at Kroger right. and at Amazon and at Target um, and at Costco?" And so we have expanded our service to our clients to be able to do wonderful. that. Wonderful, yeah, wonderful. So part of that integration is that we have, uh, you know, our clients are looking at all the retail and saying, what kind of strategies do we need to bring, right. especially around omni-channel, across all the retailers and not just one of them? And can we have a cohesive, connective, connected mm-hmm. strategy right. um, across those things? So, oh wow! So that's uh, exciting. That's really what what we approach. And then if I if I step back and just say, okay, what do you really do? You know, or, or what's your focus? Yeah. We want to grow our clients' business. We want. We want to, our taglines a little bit, we want to grow what matters. Right. Um, and so our clients are suppliers um, to retailers. And so they're, uh, you know, CPG. And yeah. and um, early on in the days of Harvest, um, our founders were from larger CPG companies mm-hmm. like Procter & Gamble and, and others. And mm-hmm. so they saw just this need to, for small and medium-sized suppliers that they didn't have the resources that these large suppliers had. Mm-hmm. And so they, uh, they're they at a, a bit of a disadvantage. And so our, our founders saw that and really said, hey, we want to provide the same level of service, the same teams, yeah. the same analytics um, that these large CPGs can afford because they have the resources yeah. for it. So they just, yeah, they saw this area where they really thought we can make a difference here. Um, and they went after it, you know, and, uh, and so we've grown since then. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about, uh, one of the things we're going to talk about towards, uh, our wrap of it, we're going to talk about this great company, Harvest Group, and we're going to get into some more things and some awards they've won and some, a big celebration they recently had, <laughs> because I want to, I really want you, I mean, in our, in our, in our conversation, you talk about your really, what's, what's key to your company. And we're going to come back to that. So you need to hang on because. Uh, Greg's going to share some really great information as we wrap. Now, let's talk about omnichannel. You know, our 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 mission here is to is to really open up th- this whole idea of thinking about the future of omnichannel yeah. and say, look, yeah. this is this is how the future is going to look and how we're going to shop. 
and how we're going to do business. And it's exciting. Uh, yeah, I've been in retail for 40 years. And, I, I, you know, Greg, I'm probably more excited today about retail mm-hmm. than ever. And, you know, when I started Walmart out of school, um, we had 120 stores. And it was the brick and mortar all the way. But now what's developing is so exciting on how we shop. Yeah. And the consumer yeah. is winning. They benefit. I mean, absolutely. I want to tell you, when, when I can open my door and get my package, I'm one happy guy, you know, in my house shoes. I'm just telling you, I mean, yeah. I'm, you know, wow, this is the way to shop for me. Yeah. And but, but then you still have the brick and mortar if you want to go do that. Yeah. So we're going to get into that. So. The thing that let's do, let's drill, let's drill down a bit into your services. Okay, let's talk about these these different areas that you work in every day. You you and so let let's just let's talk about let's just talk about retail media. Yeah, go. Yeah, talk talk to us about that. Sure thing. Yeah. yeah. So um, it, if I look back at like some history, even of retail media, where. Um, you know, again, Google was kind of the start of that long ago, but but when Amazon jumped in, um, you know, I think they, they figured out that their traffic, their audience was a a valuable asset of theirs. And so, um, they, you know, being able to bring advertising and retail media, you know, to their site Mm -hmm. ended up being a really big deal for, they could, you know, people could promote their products. They could. Uh, especially new products. Um, it is hard to break into these search engines with new things. Mm-hmm. Um, usually the older, the, the longer it's been in, the better. And so for um, a lot of this re, you know, retail media and expansion of those things is really, you know, how do we break in? How do we make sure that our product, that our name, our brand is up in front right. and that people know about us? Mm-hmm. And so part of it's brand recognition, part of it is, you know, driving sales. Um, so for us, the expansion of it has been incredible. We've, uh, I mean, just over the past, what, three years, four years, um, to see how it's grown and, and Walmart has really expanded uh, their services. Um, and, and for us, as soon as we saw them doing it, we were jumping in. Oh, yeah. Um, and so we're, we are partners, you know, with Walmart in this and Walmart Connect. Um, and we, uh, we <coughs> certainly have uh have i think helped them out um from a you know testing standpoint we we go through and work with them all the time about um you know what our clients need what we're looking for and and their team is incredible yeah um over there and so it has been really amazing for us to work with them and to talk through you know their service and and how we want to provide re, uh, retail media mm-hmm. um, to suppliers and so uh, you know ultimately the goal is to get uh, to get customers to buy, you know, what they need at the right, you know, you want to get the right price. You want to get, um, the four P's, you know, right. right. As, as we talk about. And so you want to get all those right, but really getting your, your products in front of people is, is going to be important. So for us, um, we opened up, uh, you know, our retail media kind of branch, um, and, uh, a while back, you know, a few years ago, and um, we serve our clients uh, by we created our own in-house advertising technology where we could plug directly into Walmart. Mm-hmm. Um, we also plug into uh, other retailers mm-hmm. that we're at. So we do plug into Amazon. We plug into Target mm-hmm. and and other ones. And so mm-hmm. we um, for us, it's important to think of a holistic strategy around mm-hmm. retail media spend. Right. So for suppliers, they want to get the best bang out of their buck, mm-hmm. right? And so right. when you go in and you spend one dollar somewhere you want to make sure that it's it's targeted at the right customer um at the uh, in the right area where you're really wanting to push growth um and there are different strategies you can go uh you can take with that there's a strategy around um do i really want to just push my brand and make sure that it's a brand awareness Mm -hmm. and so you're going to spend a little bit different and in different areas there Mm -hmm. Um, you may even spend across multiple retailers when you think through that. Right. Um, or is it we're just trying to drive sales, you know, and so thinking through that about this is this is really one of our best products. We don't want to make sure that it's up front, mm-hmm. that people are aware of it. And so you're really pushing for that. Then it's a little bit different strategy. Mm-hmm. And you put you may put different minimums and maximums on your your bids and, and your your campaigns and your budgets. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for us, what we do is we Think about that strategy. What's the best thing? What are their ultimate goals? Mm-hmm. What do our clients really want to achieve? Um, and then we break that down into, okay, this is the budget we have to work with. And so this is the strategy we're going to take across 
multiple retailers um, and really across maybe yeah. multiple product lines Wonderful. or different things like that. Exciting. That's so, exciting. Yeah. So, what are some of the other services? Let's talk, talk through some more of those that you're doing. That's exciting. Yeah, sure. And that's, we kind of, we started with one of the newest ones, Yeah, you know, that we do. And so like going back um, to like the original core of what we do mm -hmm. is around like the whole omni-channel. Mm -hmm. um, so it is around brick and mortar, digital and advertising or retail media mm -hmm. all tied together. Um, we use the phrase trilingual in uh like that. at harvest yeah That's where great. we yeah our account managers need to be trilingual right yeah. and they and they do an amazing job of it where they need to be able to speak brick and mortar mm -hmm. and digital and retail media so like they're uh, we certainly have specialists in each area right. uh, they can go deep in those areas but right. we we need to, you know, all in a sense understand that because that's that's where that omni-channel power really right. lies is through all three of those. So we, um, you know, our our full service capabilities is is really working with our clients to grow their business mm -hmm. um, at retail, and mm -hmm. it's everything from helping them with line reviews and you know new products and uh, to. We get into replenishment and and supply chain, and mm -hmm. so we we do a lot of work there, and then a bunch of analytics, and that's uh you know that's obviously where tech a lot of good tech comes in, um and so we have our own in house uh, development teams and uh, technology team, and so we've built our own uh, technology around that as well and analytics platform. So so all the pieces you just you talked about digital retail talking about brick and mortar. And so what I, what I, your company, it, it, it talks about how you integrate all of this, right? And, you know, I just read uh, someone said at Walmart, uh, you know, your closest store is your phone. Mm. Okay, yes. you know, and, yeah. And, yeah. you know, it is the closest store yeah. today. It is. But, but so how do you integrate from all these platforms, from brick and mortar and the digital to retail media so you can integ you integrate all of this. We do. So you're so you're an expert in each of these areas. Your company. Yeah, we are. Yeah, our company across the board is. Um, I'll say it, one. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Oh. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. That's part of it. Yeah. And we continue to grow as technology grows, as retailers grow, as retailers invest right. in different areas. We're yeah. following that as well because we want right. to serve. Um. I, I think you've talked before about you know the triple win of the the supplier wins when the retailer wins and ultimately when the customer wins. Oh, yeah. right? And for us, it's a quadruple win because we're a part of that story as well. Right. And so we're, we want to make sure that we're, we stay up to date with everything that's going on. And so you do have to be an expert in yeah. all those areas. Um, how to integrate it. Uh, I'll, get, I'll, I'll nerd out a little bit, talk a little bit about tech side of it. Yeah. Um, like for, there is a concept in technology uh, where you create a headless platform. And so what headless means is um, no matter how someone comes in, they're going to get the same experience. Um, and so it could, so we create this, you know, blend of, um, or excuse me, not exactly blend. We create uh, this core feature set where um, it's always the same, no matter how you approach it. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to technology and like your phones, mm -hmm. uh, it's that you want a similar experience. Now there's gonna be obviously some differences, but you want from someone walking into a store and looking at a shelf and looking at you know a, a mod, um, then you want that experience to translate into, you know what does it mean digitally? What does it mean on my phone? What does it mean social media? What does it mean when someone's promoting products on even TikTok at this point? Right. Um, and then how does the, how do ads work into that? Right. And, and so you you want to think holistically about all these things together. It's almost for us now. It's almost impossible to separate them. Yeah. We can't think about just brick and mortar without thinking about exactly. you know digital and without thinking about retail media right. anymore. You almost you have to think about all three of these things. Mm. And then even tracking, uh, and then, you know, after a sale is made, mm -hmm. um, then you want to think, okay, how, where do they come from? Was it from an ad of what platform? Mm -hmm. uh, how, you know, did it drive a sale? Is it incremental? That's a huge thing that we talk about a lot mm -hmm. is, um, was that an incremental ad or were they going to buy anyway? You right. know, that's the, those are really important um, statistics that are sometimes those metrics are hard to get to. And so thinking through those things is important. Mm -hmm. And then um, last piece is, is thinking through 
uh, maybe not last piece, another piece yeah. <laughs> is yeah. thinking through um, how do each how do each um, area how do they affect the other area? Right, and this is really where that you know integration the rubber meets yeah. the road. So okay. I'll, I'll give you an example. Yeah. Um, say you're running an ad on a product. Uh, we'll just we'll say it's applesauce. Mm-hmm. You know, you're running an ad on an applesauce, um, and say it's a new you know some new flavor of applesauce, and you run out of stock. One, you want to stop advertising. You don't have stock there. Right. And so you want those two things to tie together to say, hey, when we see digitally that, you know, we, we're we out of stock, we've got to really turn that ad off. But then there's also the next step of, okay, we're out of stock. We need to get back in stock. Right. 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 And so you're you're thinking, well, now um, what's the location? You know, is this is this a store fulfillment? Is this, you know, how exactly is this being fi- fulfilled? You know, when you're getting to DC level stuff yeah, um, or store fulfillment letter level stuff. Yeah. And so thinking about that, which so gets into your supply chain, which gets into replenishment, right? So yeah. that's how things really should be tied together and integrated is you're not just stopping at one or two right. things, but you're thinking all the way through to solve those problems. I love it. Yeah. And, and that's what you do at Harvest Group. I mean, you really look at this whole thing. And, you know, one of the things that when we began uh, at DBB, uh, when we relaunched it, we said our focus is omnichannel retail, but, but our purpose was to demystify omnichannel. Mm. You're yeah. doing that for us today. <laughs> you're you're taught because you're bringing this educational and this knowledge to the forefront of, of for these retailers to to. To look at all that, I love your example about the Alistair. Nothing, nothing's worse than, than when you go and the shelf is empty. Yes, you know, and yeah. and and you're able to to go take take that all the back to the source, right? Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah, I mean, that's to, what you're doing. It's powerful. You want to so well, thank you. You want to you want to solve the root problem. Yeah, you know, and you want, and ultimately you want the customer to win. Right. And so, you know, being in stock is important, but making sure they know about your product, making sure they know the benefits of those things. Yeah. That's why a lot of uh, a lot of the digital side of it, the benefit is you can get so much more information to people yeah. on a website um, through, you know, just extended content, videos, um, mm-hmm. reviews. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there are, there are just lots of areas mm-hmm. there. Um and then kind of the next step for us at Harvest, too, is that we're not just doing it at one retailer, right? Yeah. We're doing it at all the retailers. They're all so different. Yeah. Um, they really have, have different approaches um, where, you know, obviously like Walmart, one of their primary strategies is, you know, EDLP. And it just, and they are, yeah. they have dominated with that, which right. is amazing. Right. Um, they, and so they, they own that strategy, mm-hmm. right? But if you go to another retailer, they're going to have a little bit different strategy where, um, say, for example, Kroger is going to be more promotion based Mm -hmm. and they're more personalization based. And so they they create these personal Mm -hmm. uh, promotions for people because Mm -hmm. they've got that membership data. So they they just have a different approach. And so knowing that and, and by the way. Target has a different one. Yeah. Amazon's clearly different. Right. Uh, You've talked about that on this before. Amazon's very, very different. Yeah. But knowing the differences between retailers is really important. So as we bring our clients to other retailers mm-hmm. and start to serve them there, then we can, able, we can be able to translate some of those strategies to say, That's okay, perfect. it worked here. Um, we need to tweak it a little bit here, right. but we still want the overall goals to be the same. And, and yeah, and that's really where, um, that's, a, that's a big area for us. Well, it's know. got to be, and uh, what I'm hearing too is that, that Definitely overall what you said, this is the goal, but then you take it and you go really deep into each individual retailer based upon what their philosophy is and business and, and to their customers. And so you're able, you're able to take that directly, uh, build that directly for that retailer. Yeah. If that's uh, So you're serving your client, your customer really well in that space based upon their objectives and mission and all of that. Yes. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's it, big. It, and it, it, it comes down to talent, you know, and yeah. people and, yeah. and um, just yeah. working with the incredible people that I do that are way smarter than I am. Well, um, is, is, yeah, yeah it's and, always, I mean, yeah, you probably know, you know, that uh, being around people that challenge you yeah. um, is, is so rewarding and, and challenging yeah. personally you know, <laughs> yeah, at times as well, you know, and, yeah. and I know you, I get, I'm going to keep referencing to all your great podcasts that I've been listening <laughs> well, to. Thank you. But, but your, your stories about how, 
um, you've been challenged, you know, at times and how you had to look at things a little bit differently. And, and, you know, I think the time that you got on a plane with Mr. Sam, you know, and, you know <laughs> I mean, what a great story. And, and even as you shared, I learned things from that. I'm like, oh yeah, people, right? Yeah. Uh, right. People. Yeah. People are very important in knowing, knowing, uh, who you work with and your teammates. You're, you're just, so correct. And, good thing. and we're going to come back to that because there's some questions I have, uh, that I'm very, very impressed with uh, your organization and, and the people. But I want to come back to that because yeah. there's, there's a couple of things there. I'm really great learning for all of us that we'll, we'll get into. Now, as we think about the future, okay, and um, I, I think it's so exciting, the future. And, you know, I, I, I am so glad I worked with a great company that we, we never stayed still. Mm-hmm. Change was the most consistent thing. <laughs> yes. And I and that is how I look at my life now because of that experience I had in that. So as we think change, uh, let's talk about AI. All right. Okay, because yes. it's like <laughs> every time I turn on my laptop, my iPad, my phone, I'm reading articles about AI. Yes. And I'm hearing yeah. reports about AI everywhere, <laughs> what the government's doing and all of that. So just... Lay it out. Talk okay. to us, man. Where's it All going? Right. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I will. Um, the <laughs> disclaimer is I will. I will freely admit I am a early adopter. That's okay. And so I love new technology. Um, when it, uh, you know, I, I want to dig in. And so. Yeah. Um, When we talk about AI, uh, um, first of all, it is most certainly within the realm of technology, at least, it's certainly the story of the year. Okay. Um, It is, it has driven so much, um, even revenue. I think uh, NVIDIA, which is the the processor chips behind a lot of this, um, I believe they are the top performing stock in the S&P 500. So uh, for this year. And so even like from that, perspective it is a really big deal um what what we have to judge is you you've got this hype curve in a sense where the we're we're at the very peak you know it's a bit of a roller coaster the hype curve so it goes way way up and all the hype and you know that's generated and then there's going to be start to be some disappointment where people realize like right now sometimes things like the, the generative AI, things like chat GPT aren't always trustworthy. <laughs> and sometimes you actually have to tell it, don't lie to me. <laughs> then um, th- th- that hype curve kind of, there's some disappointment there. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, it can't do everything I thought I could do. But then after that, it raises back up mm-hmm. to this and kind of plateaus and slowly grows after that about, hey, this is really a good use of technology. Mm-hmm. So I will freely admit that um, generative AI, chat GPT, uh, it also has, you know, other of uh, um, Microsoft has just released Copilot, which is their uh, generative AI that mm-hmm. integrates into Office 365. Um, and they just released that a couple of weeks ago. Well, I read that. So it's, um, and, and right now, I mean, they're, you know, trying to figure out what's hype and what's real is is part of my job Mm -hmm. um but we but i really think that the what i've seen has been really incredible and the way i've used it so i use it every day Mm -hmm. um i use it for research i use it for creative uh ways to to come up with ideas um i use it even to you know to edit emails and say okay i wrote this email will you help clean it up will you turn it into bullet points Mm -hmm. will you do this you know Will you make it more professional? Will you simplify it? It can do all of those things, but always with, I need to review it afterwards. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't, you don't just create something and then send it off. You always need to review it afterwards, but big picture, um, the, the anecdotal stories coming out of its usefulness and especially around this Microsoft Copilot uh, release have been pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard everything from it saves all of our people uh, 30 minutes a day, which may not seem a lot, but at scale, that's transformational. Right. Um, and and then there are others that are saying 40 to 60% savings, you know, just depending on the job. So mm-hmm. it's, I think, um, uh, again, trying to stay big picture at least, you know, when you see big moves in, in uh, big economic numbers like a GDP, mm-hmm. those are usually because of innovation or or uh, productivity increases. Mm-hmm. And I think this hits both of those, where um, it really has the ability to increase our productivity, our creativity, save us time. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say we are just at the early stages of understanding what it can do. Um, but 
right now, I think, you know, your, people are deciding, do I jump in now? Or do I wait? Because mm -hmm. it's changing so fast. Mm -hmm. So back to the only consistent thing is change. Yes. Yeah. And the rate of change is increasing. Mm -hmm. So things are changing faster than they really ever have before. I think every week, every two weeks, something new with mm -hmm. generative AI is coming out. Right. And so for us, keeping up with that's really important, but knowing when to step in, what to adopt, um, is, is the challenge, you know, for everybody. So our re retailers have already been jumping in. Walmart right. has, um, their, my assistant, I believe that they have, have been talking about, mm -hmm. and, um, it is a generative AI system that helps, um, you know, their team be more productive, be more creative. Um, I can, I can guarantee that they are working on lots of other things. Right. Um, but that is the, you know, that's one step for them. And I know other retailers are doing it. Obviously Amazon is so tech forward. They've got their system that they're working on. And, uh, and then Kroger certainly is doing things. Um, so that, and even big, large suppliers, um, I believe the CIO of uh, Procter and Gamble came out and, and was talking about, hey, we want to be AI first. You know, right. we want to be thought of it mm -hmm. thinking through AI first about how we can integrate this into what we do every day. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're talking through. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I can I, tell. You can't tell. Yeah, uh, I, I, right. I do. I, I love it. And again, freely admit I'm an early adopter, but yeah. um, the things that it has helped me do in the last couple months that I've been using it um, really has, has saved time, has allowed me to be more creative um, and, and just giving me insight into, into some things that, uh, maybe I would have never thought before. Right. And so, uh, learning how to use it is, you know, there's a bit of a curve of, mm -hmm. you know, oh yeah, make sure you tell it not to lie to you, <laughs> <laughs> which then you're thinking, wait, how, how trustful is this? Um, it doesn't happen often, you yeah. know, that, but it, uh, there, there, I think that is probably the biggest thing that they're working on right now is, is they call it hallucinations. Yeah. Trying to minimize those hallucinations. Um, mm -hmm. but the future and I, and stepping back to retail, um, the future, I think, is really having it start to interpret some of the bigger stories for us, especially around data. Mm -hmm. And so there are there are tons of startup companies now that have just emerged in the last five, six months. Mm. And there's a whole section of them that are working on putting generative AI on top of large data warehouses, large data lakes, where um, they know how to look at the data, how to interpret it, and maybe come up with new insights Right. Um, around what's going on in the marketplace, wow. what's going on with certain customers. Um, at different retailers are now creating uh, what they're calling uh, clean rooms, which is you can look at advertising data or you can look at other data where any personal information is taken out. So it keeps it clean, but they're providing that um, to companies like us where we have access to mm -hmm. some of those, where we can really dig deep into data and do a lot of data science. And I think generative AI has a huge benefit to data science mm -hmm. and really examining things um, at scale where it's really hard for just one person to do. Mm -hmm. um, so there, anyway, the, the sky's the limit wow. on what I think is going to happen. I think both personal productivity um, is, it, mm -hmm. you know, could really increase as we adopt it, but also corporate wide thinking through how can it really help us across the, the huge amounts of data we have or even thinking through creative ways to solve problems. Mm -hmm. um, there's There are lots of applications right now that we're just scratching the surface of. Wow, yep. that is exciting. And uh, and I know that if uh, if our viewers have questions and things like that, they're able to, uh, to, to look to Harvest Group to help them guide them through this process of thinking and understanding. And uh, I think, it's, like you said, I think it's gonna be huge. Yeah. But you've, you've done a great job really laying it out and challenging us, and and I I I really do agree with you. Uh, it's going to be so much part of the future. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And ultimately, though, I I I think again, like most changes in this space that we're talking about, it's ultimately going to go all the way down to the consumer, yeah. and it's going to help that consumer make a better choice or select or more information about product, service, etc. And as a consumer, to to so many, uh, so much of that again is exciting. You yeah. did a great job on that. Well, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that was powerful. Uh, let me let me tell you one more example. Yeah, please. Of how I used it just yesterday. Okay. So my I have an Apple Watch, and my um, the band on my watch is getting old. I need a new band, 
And now they have like three different ba bands that I can choose from. And they're, I, I'm looking for a more active one. We, I want one that's good for cycling. Right? Yeah. And so I asked ChatGPT, um, you know, what, okay, tell me the difference between these three brands or these three mm -hmm. bands uh, that Apple's providing for their watch. And it went through and did a diagnosis and, and it was amazing. And it didn't just regurgitate what's on the Apple website. It went out and looked at, you know, other websites that were commenting about it, reviewers that were mm -hmm. commenting about it. And it brought together all that information and it gave me really good information, but I still wasn't sure. And so then I asked ChatGPT, what, out of these three <laughs> options, what's the best for cycling? And it picked one. And it said, this, I think, is the best for cycling because of this, 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 and this. And it was it was amazing to me. Yeah. That was the one I was leaning towards, but I just wasn't 100% yeah. sure. Um, and it, it was really cool to see that at mm -hmm. play. And sometimes it really wows me. And, yeah. uh, and that was one time that happened yesterday. Okay. okay. You guys, you guys, you got to see if I picked the right Apple band <laughs> here, uh, on that. but yeah, we'll have to come back to that. You have to give me that advice. Yes. I'm yes sure. Absolutely. Um, okay. As again, let's go back for a moment. Uh, you've done such a great job laying us through the work you do at, at Harvest, but let's go and talk about your company for a moment. Uh, yeah. um, the, uh, you mentioned earlier the people, but I, I know I just, uh, I just seen something go on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, I think you had some big event recently at your company. We did. We C did. Tell us about that. Yeah. So it's called the big meeting. Big um, meeting. Big meeting. The, the yeah, big that meeting. I know, yes. you know, I love it. Meeting. In other words, yes. you know what this is going to be. I love <laughs> we it. We know. It's it's the big one. Yeah. yeah. We have it every year. So mm -hmm. it's an annual meeting. Um, we It's where we bring all of our teammates from across the U.S. They all come into Northwest Arkansas. And we do a three-day event. Um, we, uh, we shut down the office in a sense, of course, mm -hmm. We still have meetings with merchants and retailers and and uh, and our clients if needed, but we try to be plan as much in advance, and it is just an incredible time for us to be together. Um, what what we kind of look at is we we celebrate the past year, we celebrate the wins we've had, mm -hmm. um, and we really reflect and spend time thinking through that. I'll, I mean. Retail has been a tough year this year. Mm -hmm. um, I think with inflation, um, with you know uh, all the all the different things that are going on, it's been challenging in mm -hmm. retail. Um, that's why uh, you, I mean Walmart's growth has really been impressive right. for me to be consistent post COVID mm -hmm. of just you know quarter after quarter growth has been amazing. Um, but there there's obviously been you know challenges in inventory across retailer and other things that that they're trying to get right. And so I think the, some of that stuff has made it tough. And so for us to come through and say, hey, even in a tough year, look at all these things that, you know, that have been, you know, wins for our clients, mm -hmm. um, ways that we've been able to grow, uh, you know, even in an environment with um, all of the, the economic uncertainty going on and high interest rates. And so um, I, I think it was a just a really special time this year for us to be able to celebrate um, those wins. It's, it's mm. been great. So that's one thing, looking back at the year and talking through that and then looking, uh, you know, thinking about our people, what do they need now? What kind of training do we want? So we spend time training people. Mm. Uh, we had a generative AI training, mm. uh, where we went through and did some use cases and everybody, yeah. you know, had, uh, had chat GPT out and we're working on it. Mm. Um, and so we, yeah, we, we train people, we, we talk through that and then we, uh, really, uh, project for the future, and oh. so we think: what are our what are our strategies? What are we thinking about for the next three to five years? We continue to review those, and then especially what needs to be true next year for us to reach those goals. And yeah. so we we look at our goals for 2024. Yeah. We talk through them, um, and uh, and it is just exciting for me because uh, as we think through, um, you know, what is happening? What is happening in the industry? All the th uh, omni-channel. Yeah. Uh, all the potential there is just enormous. Yeah. And for us to be able to, you know, with our clients navigate that journey um, is just exciting for us. And so we, yeah, we, it was an amazing time. Um, we even, we have our, oh, an awards banquet where um, we talk through our values and we have an award for every value. Yeah. Um, internally, we give an award to, uh, as someone externally that lives the harvest values and even to a client, mm. um, that embodies those as well. And then we, we have fun. We have a harvest band, 
um, which uh, I'm actually I get to be a part of, which is fun. Okay, yeah. I was going to so, ask you, are you part of that band? Yeah. So yeah. my, I mean, uh, again, more personal stuff. But my wife uh, is uh, is a musician, and so we uh, we have a band that we play in Northwest Arkansas. It's blues and jazz, and it's the Rachel B Band. That's my wife, Rachel Billingsley. Mm -hmm. um, and so I get to play there, but really for that, I just uh, I stay in the background, you know, and <laughs> and and let her do her thing. She's just an incredible <laughs> musician. Um, but so with the Harvest Band, uh, we have so many talented mm -hmm. teammates uh, that there are there are tons of musicians, and so we get together, we practice for a couple weeks, yeah. um, and we do about an hour of songs, and it's uh, you know all covers. But <laughs> it's so we played this year. We played everything from a Taylor Swift song yeah. um, to a Smashing Pumpkins song <laughs> in the '90s. Yeah. So we hit grunge, we hit yeah. pop. Yeah. We had a little bit of punk. We had some uh, normal <laughs> rock, you know, life is a highway. And, yeah. <laughs> um, and we just, we really had a great time that's awesome. uh, doing that. And then, and we end the night with karaoke. So oh, it's uh, yeah. That's I mean, a fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. just being with each other, yeah. creating relationships. Um, and I, I think it's, it's just an incredible thing for our people to know each other, to um, yeah. be transparent with each other uh, and, you know, to grow together. Uh, as we continue on this journey. So that, that transformational growth that I started with, mm -hmm. that's not just client focused, it's also internally focused. So well, we're, we're thinking critical. about, you know, personal growth, you know, business career growth um, uh, across the board. We want that mm -hmm. to be transformational for uh, all areas. Yeah. You know, one of the things I have a sense and just, you know, knowing you and just our, our conversations on the bike and otherwise, and then you sharing about your company, I love the title of a big meeting. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Now, so as we close, uh, one of the things that that I know that's that that Harvest Group does it it really intentionally focuses on really what got you here and going to going to get you there is your people. Mm -hmm. So yeah. talk about that. Let's. I know you. I know there's some some specificities around. You know your focus on culture, technology, et cetera. But so talk about that as we wrap up, because I want people to really sense that this that this is such a great company. You work really, really hard at what you do. You work really hard about at, uh, to to keep great people and develop your people. So as we wrap, give them give give our viewers and our listeners uh, uh, your your critical steps around that. What do you yeah. focus on? Well, absolutely. I think what was what's neat is that um, the company was founded on on having this type of culture. Mm -hmm. So it's it for us, it's not something new. It's something that's ingrained, you know, in a sense. Um, and that's that it, for us, extraordinary service is something that we really strive for, mm -hmm. and um, we know that that starts with people, right? And it and and for us um it really is finding like our values is is what you know stands out with that um and so we we have five values of uh integrity relationship service excellence and journey and those that's the lens through which mm -hmm. we hire people we promote people mm -hmm. that's the lens through which we do our work that though the lens through which we want to serve our clients um and it's not it's not for for us, it's not just up on a wall anywhere. Um, in fact, I don't think it's on any walls. <laughs> Needs um, to be in your heart, yes, in your mind. Yeah, right? but it is. Um, it is really something we talk about all the time, every yep. quarter. We we have team meetings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just about every week, and uh, every quarter we will take a team meeting where we talk specifically about our values, and we open up and and uh, have a share time where any individual can talk about how someone in the company has lived up to certain values. And, and uh, it's just, it, it's a wonderful time for us um, to be encouraging to each other uh, and at times challenge each other, um, you know, to say, hey, the, the, you know, this is who we are and we love it and we really think it is what grows us as people. And, and that, that's, you know, core to what we do. Mm -hmm. um, we feel like if we take care of ourselves, if we um, have that culture internally, then it's not something that we have to manufacture when we go talk to clients, but it's someone who we are mm -hmm. when we talk to our clients. I love that. And, and it's really, uh, you know, hopefully it, 
it integrates with everything we do is is the is the approach. So you, I, I know though you've had a couple sessions, a couple podcasts on um, on servant leadership, mm-hmm. and that's certainly a highlight for us. Mm-hmm. Is is you know thinking through servant leadership. Mm-hmm. What does that mean uh, at our company? How do how do we serve each other? Um, how how do we really care for each other? Um, a lot of Brene Brown going on, you know, yeah, and, sure. and which is just fin- fantastic. Yeah, and, she's fantastic. Yeah, and uh, and it's uh, it's just something that we we embody, but we work at. It's mm-hmm. it is something we certainly, yeah. um, you know, take some good effort mm-hmm. and good energy to continue to strive for and mm-hmm. and continue to grow our culture. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, Sam Walton used to tell us, you know, he said we stand on the backs of our people, mm-hmm. and you really do. Yeah. I mean, the company stands on the back, and it's about the people. Yeah. And and I, first of all, congratulations on your values. Those are great. Oh. Those are great. And it's obvious that you live those out, and they're in their heart, the minds of how how your uh, your team members think and react, and in relationship they have with their clients and each other, and all of that is it is obvious. Yeah, it's there. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Talk about your um, t- talk about technology and strategy as we. So I know I know you, you you one of your other great things you do is that's integration of technology. You shared that you shared that with us. Is there any other things you want to say about that? Because because you really did you really have taught us about omnichannel here today. So anything else you want to talk about there? Yeah. So it yeah with integrated technology it it fits with everything we're doing on omnichannel. So yeah. if we are going into multiple retailers at, you know, um, Mm -hmm. omni-channel then, and we want all of those things to connect together, then really for us, thinking through technology that enables that is really important. And so it is, you know, for us, we have our own in-house platforms. Um, It's there, it's pretty neat because we've got all these great analysts that have huge experience at retail Mm -hmm. and they're the ones that are helping us design it. And so it's not done just by engineers. But we actually have analysts designing it and engineers yeah. building it. I love it. Um, yeah. And that, you know, those type things where we can really um, work side by side with those on the front lines, mm-hmm. with those that, um, you know, are are meeting with retailers, that mm-hmm. for those that are, you know, side by side wearing the jersey of our clients. Yeah. Uh, then when that happens, then we know what really matters mm-hmm. and we know what metrics matter. We know how different retailers look at mm-hmm. di- metrics a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can integrate that into our mm-hmm. systems as well. And so, yeah, when it comes to analytics, when yeah. it comes to retail media, yeah. we know what the retailer wants. We know what ultimately the customer right. wants. Right. And so we can make sure that all the little details matter when it comes to all those things. And, you know, Last but not least, which is the most important, is really what I've heard from you today is about how you how you really think about your clients. Mm-hmm. You spend a lot of time on that. We do. <laughs> That's awesome. We do. Yeah, we do. Um, it it is. We love our clients. Mm-hmm. We have the most incredible clients because they are, in yeah. a sense, they're taking a chance on us. Yeah. You know, they they maybe they've heard our reputation. They've heard uh, what we've done for other. Uh, other clients, you know, through word of mouth. Um, but still it's a, mm-hmm. to be able to say, Hey, we trust you to help us with at this retailer is, is really a big deal to us. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's, that's such an important thing that we value. Right. Um, and so we, that's why that extraordinary service is important to right. us. Um, we absolutely love our clients right. and, yeah. um, they're, they are so creative, innovative, um, j- brilliant across the board of how they look at mm-hmm. things. We we learn just as much from our oh, clients as yeah. maybe we teach them. Yeah. Maybe even probably even more. Right. Um, because they're because since we have such a diverse number of clients, we know they're looking at things from all different angles. Right. And they want to see things from all different angles. Yeah. And um, and at the same time, for us, we're thinking, okay, let's take all of these different things mm-hmm. and let's let's make sure that they have a unified strategy. Mm-hmm. At Walmart, because Walmart has certain right. goals. Walmart has a certain w- approach. Yeah. And um, it is it is just such a good deal, good benefit for us yeah. um, to be to be right there, you know, alongside right. with our clients, um, to be on their team. I think that's a, that's a thing for us is we, we feel like, um, you know, when our clients ask us to join with them, it's a partnership and we're, we are a part of their team. 
um, to where even some clients even consider us on their team, you know, in, in a sense, like we are under yeah. their umbrella. Awesome. Um, and that, that type of relationship is really important for us. Mm. Um, yeah, as, as we, you know, help, I mean, ultimately we all want to grow right. the business. We want to, we want to be a benefit to retailer. We want to be a benefit mm -hmm. to ultimately customers. Um, and so we all have those same goals. Exactly. And, uh, so, so to be able to align on those things and to, to just watch their success, mm -hmm. um, is very fulfilling for us. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, uh, yeah, that's, it's, uh, uh, I mean, I, I love our clients to death. Yeah. It's, it, it really is uh, just an amazing thing what we get to do. Yeah. Greg Bisley, it's, it was inspiring conversation. Oh, well, thank you. It, uh, it's it, been it, so good to sit it, here and talk with you. It, too. Is, it was inspiring. I'm inspired by what I've heard. And thank you and all of your wonderful team members for all that you do for the clients, your clients. Uh, thank you for giving us a peek inside your company uh, about not, about all the services and the technology and how you look at all of that. But I think the thing that everything stood out but the things that I, I would tell you that 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 is really powerful is is your people. Mm. You know, mm. you recognize that and you pour into them. And and I love the values you talked about. And then that's what makes all this possible is cost your people. You know that, Absolutely. and you have recognized yeah. that. And so just just your heart around your business and your heart towards your people and the passion that you have for your clients and uh, you know um what a great conversation uh again uh thank you greg well i yeah. i'd so appreciate you having uh, uh me here and uh it really is an honor just to i mean it and it's fun <laughs> just just for us to spend more time know. together which is great i know um, and so thank you so much for oh. having me and uh, yeah the best of luck. I'm going to keep listening for sure. Oh, well, and, thank you. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I appreciate that. As as things move on, you know, and as as all these changes happen, you know, we're, we'll have more to talk about as we keep Absolutely. Moving. And yeah. we're going to have more to talk about because uh, we, we're going to get this guy back at absent. Maybe he can bring some of those wonderful people with him when he comes back. Oh, yeah. And that would be great, oh, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much to all our viewers and listeners today. We appreciate you taking time. Uh, it's, it's very, very important to us that we bring great uh, programs to you. Uh, check out db, dbbnwa.com because that's our website. And what well, you'll, you'll see our podcast there, but you'll also see, see articles. And there will be an article about Harvest Group there as we, as we post this. Others, other, thank you for, for joining us on, on your favorite streaming channel, you know, Spotify, Apple, YouTube. Thank you for doing that. Uh, we really appreciate you taking your valuable time and listening to that. Greg, Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I can't wait to have you back in the studio, but I'm looking forward to us being on the bike, too, yes, together absolutely. very soon, okay? Absolutely. All right, thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Greg. Yeah, Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.